Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage. Today's garbage is Skeleton Man, a sci-fi channel original movie from 2004. It's a slasher movie, and has one of the worst monster costumes I've ever seen. It's like a Grim Reaper cloak from Spirit Halloween, with a piece of cardboard in the hood to hold it up. And the actor's face is just painted like a skull, so you can see the tip of his nose painted black when he turns his head. This movie had a reported production budget of two million dollars, and it looks like something I would have made with my friends in high school. Maybe most of that money went to casting Starship Troopers guy. Yeah, it's that guy again, Casper Van Dien. Some mother was cruel enough to name the kid Casper, but I guess it's appropriate considering the state of his career. You get it? That was a ghost joke, because this is a Halloween special. What? Ah! We're not doing skits in this video. What? Why not? Because I don't feel like animating it, now f*** off. The movie starts with some archaeology professor and his assistant, Mercy, speaking in really obvious ADR. I'm going to bed. Thanks, Mercy. Good night. Good night. Don't stay too late, okay? Mercy goes to the kitchen, then the professor gets a phone call and talks about how they found the skull of a Native American chief named Six Bears. There's some mention of a curse before the line goes dead, then almost immediately after mentioning said curse, the titular skeleton man comes bursting in through the ceiling and starts trashing the place. He hits Mercy with his axe in an awkward edit, but she runs away. During the scuffle between the professor and skeleton man, a bottle of some flammable liquid spills and the building instantly catches on fire. Skeleton Man hits the professor with his axe, then reaches through his torso to grab the skull. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, fellatio. You see what I did there? I said fellatio. It's because this movie sucks. You get it? Sucks? Fellatio? F*** you. Mercy watches the building go up in flames, then runs to a parked truck screaming for help, but the driver's already been killed, so then she goes inside whatever this thing's called. And finds herself in some kind of industrial boiler room or something, where some worker finds her and, for whatever reason, feels the need to touch the blood on her shirt. Just then, Skeleton Man shows up. I bet that looked a lot cooler in the director's head. So the worker picks up his OSHA-mandated workplace shotgun and tries to shoot him, but Skeleton Man just picks him up. The worker screams as Skeleton Man just kind of holds him, and then he falls over when he puts him down, like he's injured or something, even though he isn't. <laughs> oh, now he is. Skeleton Man tracks down Mercy and kills her, the facility explodes, then Skeleton Man rides away like a badass. Yeah, you sure showed that middle-aged lady. Then we see a helicopter flying around during the opening credits, which are accompanied by this ridiculous music, which I can only describe as Scary Mambo. Maybe that's just what skeleton music sounds like. I would have thought there'd be a xylophone. Then we cut to two guys running through the woods. Apparently, these two guys who aren't wearing uniforms are some kind of military guys, and they call this guy in the helicopter and tell him their squad's been killed and they're out of ammo. Look how this guy holds his phone. You need to get us out of here now! They suddenly lose signal and decide they have no choice but to hang out here. Yeah, that's the only solution, just sit there. We get a random and totally pointless monster vision shot, then Skeleton Man shows up on his horse and keeps teleporting around while poured music plays. So if Skeleton Man can teleport, that just raises the question of why he even needs a horse. Maybe it's the horse that's teleporting him, I don't know. He impales this guy and peels his scalp off, and the other guy runs away. By the way, if you're wondering why the picture quality is so bad, no, this isn't a bootleg. I sourced the footage from an official DVD release. It's on one of those eight movie packs they sell at Walmart. None of the other movies look this bad. It actually looks worse than the 369 version on Tubi TV, so I don't know. I guess they f***ed up. Kinda like my dad when he didn't pull out. Anyway, we're then introduced to the Undercover Search and Rescue Team. This guy takes off his distinctly non-military style backpack, and then they all stand around and watch a video of the guy we saw earlier on a laptop screen, talking about the Skeleton Man, but he doesn't explain that's a Skeleton Man. I can't describe it. Because the movie's trying to do that thing where they keep the monster all mysterious until it's revealed, even though we already saw it in broad daylight. You know, when Ridley Scott shot Alien, he kept the alien in shadow and only showed it partially for the most part, so you couldn't tell it was a guy in a foam rubber suit. 
If you're gonna make the monster in your two million dollar movie out of stuff you can find at Party City, maybe you should take note. This guy explains their mission is to find out what happened to those two dudes, and kill whatever that guy was talking about. And then we get a flashback to some building where some army guys walk around. Now huh? ah! what was that? I heard a scream, and now the guy who was just three feet behind me is gone, and there's stuff from the ceiling all over the floor. Oh, I guess it was nothing. Anyway, I'm off to record another TikTok video. <laughs> Moron. So Skeleton Man kills all these random soldier guys, and he chases after this one guy kills him too, and then this guy rolls down the hill for a comically long time. It's all downhill from here. We cut back to the rescue team, and I guess the filmmakers realized they needed to tell us the characters' names at some point, so on-screen text tells us this guy's name is Captain Leary, and apparently, this is supposed to be Delta Force. You know, the real-life special operations task force consisting of the best of the best elite soldiers selected from the U.S. military? Yeah, that's these guys. I'm into the covert look. Oh, so the reason these guys aren't dressed like army guys is because they're supposed to be covert for some reason. They're out in the woods so it makes no difference, but I guess it's a good excuse to not buy costumes for your two million dollar movie. These four chicks who aren't in Delta Force but are just there for some reason introduce themselves to each other, I guess because they just met up and hiked miles out into the woods without doing that first. Anyway, they all walk somewhere and start looking for clues. We see the guy who ran away earlier apparently still alive, until he isn't anymore. After some stock footage, the team packs up their stuff and they walk some more. Then this one lady, Smith, decides to go wander around by herself for some reason. We watch the other characters do nothing for a while, then we cut back to Smith pulling out her knife when she hears Skeleton Man stalking her, but she somehow doesn't hear the 700-pound farm animal charging at her. So Skeleton Man gets the drop on her, chases her around for a while, then impales her. I like how her shirt changes color because they just reused a shot from earlier. So she's dead now. We cut back to the team and they see someone sitting by a campfire. It turns out it's some Native American guy, played by a white guy in a wig. You got any beans? So Blind Indian, that's his character's name, tells them the guys they're looking for were killed by Skeleton Man, and then he explains how Skeleton Man used to be a scary Native American warrior dude who made swishing sounds every time he turned his head. During some kind of ritual, he went berserk for some reason and just started killing his own tribe. The f Then we find out Skeleton Man's real name. They call him Cottonmouth Joe. If it hadn't been for Cottonmouth Joe, I would've been sober a long time ago. Why the goblin turned on the stove? Where'd you get your costume, Cottonmouth Joe? No, really, why did he turn into a Skeleton Man with a Grim Reaper cloak? That whole backstory didn't explain anything. Was it just an excuse for the movie to do a racism? Because you don't need an excuse for that. So the team keeps walking, and so far, no one seems to have noticed that Smith hasn't come back. They find some unimportant Native American thing, and then we see some fishermen get killed by Cottonmouth Joe. Yeah, that's what we're calling him now. The team hears the fishermen scream, but it's of no consequence. Then they notice the compass is spinning out of control, presumably due to a major magnetic charge in the valley. Must be a major magnetic charge in this valley. Big enough current can cause magnetic changes in the brain. Make you see things. Oh, so maybe there's a big magnetic current in my house and it made me see this movie. Damn it. What? Trap our tree, mother No. They walk around some more, then we got another random monster vision shot to trick us into thinking something's happening. Then Leary and Casper Van Dien somehow realize there's something stalking them. So they all pull out their guns, and this guy starts rambling about his time in Laos. I had a meal there once. The Mao Pagoda. It's live scorpions on rice. Eat them with chopsticks. The movie keeps doing this thing where there won't be anything happening, so the characters just talk about random bullshit. Like it's attempting to fill dead air with characterization, but whatever they talk about, if it's not immediately relevant to what they're doing, it's always some pointless nonsense that doesn't have anything to do with the story. 
Anyway, they rub that black shit on their faces. We get this slow motion shot of them walking past the smoke machine, which I'm sure the directors thought just looked so badass. And then they don't have the black shit on their faces anymore. This lady, whose name I can't be bothered to remember, finds a skull, then Casper Van Dien says it's a Native American burial site. I guess the Native Americans buried their dead with their decapitated heads above the ground? This has nothing to do with anything, it's just meant to be creepy. We get a bunch of nature shots, this lady sees Cottonmouth Joe's reflection in the water, but it's a fake out. A whole bunch of nothing happens, and then this lady whose name I also can't be bothered to remember gets impaled by Cottonmouth Joe. She was alone because she volunteered to keep watch, and for some reason, this required her to be so far away from everyone else that they couldn't hear her scream. Next thing we know, it's nighttime. Check this out, this is some real Hollywood magic right here. Casper Van Dien's body double decides to steal a truck for no reason. Really, he just finds a road and decides to steal a truck without any explanation. I mean, he does try to run over Cottonmouth Joe, but he didn't have any reason to think he will just be there on the road. And it's obvious that this is a body double, because they go out of their way to avoid showing his face, except in these close-ups which were clearly taken from another scene. They didn't even try to photoshop the background to make it match or anything. He ends up crashing the truck and it explodes, and I'm sure this footage was taken from another movie. The body double then crawls away from the wreckage, then we get this confusingly edited shot of him getting slashed by Cottonmouth Joe. It's like Casper Van Dien had a big action scene, but they lost the footage and couldn't get him to come back for a reshoot. So they just cobbled together a different scene out of whatever footage they had from another production and filled the rest with a body double. The next morning, this guy tells Leary that Casper Van Dien and that lady both disappeared. O'Brien Davis, gone. Equipment, rifles, everything. But there's still no mention of Smith. You know, the first one of them who got killed? It's like the movie just forgot about her. That's how disposable these characters are. Yeah, this is one of those movies where they have a bunch of characters who only exist to get killed. The team sees these two guys hanging out in the woods and decide to attack them for no particular reason. This guy pulls a thing off this dude's back and somehow realizes they're just deer poachers. What was that thing, a name tag? They let them go, then we see the poachers get killed by Cottonmouth Joe. So it's like the fishermen, the, the movie's just introducing new characters for no reason other than to kill them off almost immediately. It's like someone told an AI to write a horror movie and it just cobbled a script together out of the common elements without understanding them. I once cobbled together a nuclear power plant out of some old smoke detectors without any understanding of nuclear physics, and the government didn't appreciate it, and neither did my thyroid. We get some more walking around, their electronic equipment starts to fail, then Cottonmouth Joe shows up, and this is the first time the whole group has seen him, so they tell him to identify himself. Then this asshole just walks right up to him, and it doesn't go well. What are you? Everyone starts shooting, Cottonmouth Joe rides away, then Leary calls the helicopter and asks for an extraction. As the helicopter approaches, they spot Cottonmouth Joe and shoot at him, but he kills one of the helicopter guys, and then this dude starts shooting grenades at him, so Cottonmouth Joe manages to shoot down the helicopter with an arrow. Then they find Casper Van Dien bleeding on the ground. I guess he's still alive, but then he isn't anymore. We see Cottonmouth Joe carrying away that other guy's body, then Leary babbles about some sh** trying to be dramatic. But when you lose a man from your own command, that's different, you know, that, that sticks with you. Yeah, it does stick with you. It sticks to you like my nutsack sticks to my leg in the summer. Then we get a flashback to when Leary fought in the war of recycled footage from a different movie. This guy tells him other guy's body went missing, then these two chicks sit by the water and talk about nothing. A whole lot more nothing happens, and then they come up with a plan to trap Cottonmouth Joe. If it breathes, I can kill it. Oh, f off. So I guess their genius plan is just stand around and wait for Cottonmouth Joe to show up so they can shoot at him. Well, it hasn't worked so far, but hey, you know, maybe it'll work this time it doesn't. What's-her-face chases Cottonmouth Joe, but I guess she loses track of him pretty quick because he immediately reappears and tries to stab so-and-so, and What's-her-face doesn't come back. I like to imagine Cottonmouth Joe just did the whole pose like a statue gag, and What's-her-face just ran right past him. This guy runs out of ammo and decides to just charge at the supernatural monster, and the interaction doesn't play out quite like how he scripted it in his head. 
So that guy's dead now too. Leary and so and so shoot at Cottonmouth Joe, and even though he's apparently immune to bullets, he leaves. Have you noticed that his horse keeps changing color? Maybe his horse is like a mood ring. Anyway, Leary and so and so decide now would be a good time to leave the forest. We then see What's Her Face continuing to run after Cottonmouth Joe, who I remind you went back to keep fighting the others, but she just kept running in the same direction, somehow not hearing the gunshots. I understand they have to separate the characters to kill them off one by one because that's just how horror movies work, but you can come up with a less idiotic way to make that happen. So anyway, Cottonmouth Joe appears and explodes her head. So Leary and so-and-so are the last ones alive. Leary comes up with another plan to blow up Cottonmouth Joe with a landmine. If I get close enough with this landmine, I'll level everything in a 50-yard radius. Wow, 50 yards. That must be some landmine. And then this dumbass trips and rolls to the bottom of a hill where he finds a bunch of Halloween props. Among them is the dead body of, uh, that guy. I guess Cottonmouth Joe just put him there for some reason. Leary doesn't do anything about it, so-and-so helps him back up the hill, and then they just continue on like nothing happened. It was just another pointless diversion. Cottonmouth Joe shows up again, they shoot at him, he runs away, but then they hear Cottonmouth Joe imitating someone's voice, but it's so badly voice acted that I don't even know who it's supposed to be. I guess Cottonmouth Joe can just do that now. These two are actually smart enough to realize it's a trick, but they run after the voice anyway, and ends up finding the decapitated body of that other guy, the one who charged at Cottonmouth Joe, and they realize they went around in a circle. Then, for no particular reason, they decide to separate. Really, the movie doesn't even excuse it with a throwaway line or anything. Leary just tells so-and-so to go take the high ground, and she runs off. It's all for no reason other than the plot needs them to separate. Leary starts stuffing something into a can, and then so-and-so runs into Cottonmouth Joe, who knocks her out. Leary plants the landmine, which audibly beeps, and has clearly visible blinking LED lights. Which kind of defeats the purpose of a landmine. But Cottonmouth Joe steps on it anyway, but it doesn't do anything. 50 yards, huh? If that's 50 yards, then my dick is 7 inches. Then we cut to some random chemical plant where, for no particular reason, Cottonmouth Joe decides to just show up and start killing everyone. Like, what is this guy trying to do? What's his motivation? The beginning of the movie made it seem like he was trying to take back ancient Native American artifacts, like that skull. But that just completely falls by the wayside, and he seems to be just killing random people for no reason other than the movie needs the bad guy to do bad things. Like, what's the plot? It feels like whoever made this movie just said, okay, what do we got? And then one guy said, I can get us into the chemical plant my uncle works at. And then the producer was like, okay, cool, let's have a scene at the chemical plant. And then another guy said, the woods are free to film in. So they shot most of it in the woods. And they basically just shot a bunch of disconnected scenes and strung them together with a flimsy connect the dots story afterwards. So Cottonmouth Joe just kind of wanders around killing everyone he sees, then Leary sees the fires at the chemical plant, then he finds so-and-so and brings her down to the chemical plant parking lot, and I guess it took several hours to get around the hill because it's suddenly nighttime now and there's cops and emergency vehicles all over. He puts so-and-so in an ambulance, then talks to a sheriff played by John Travolta's brother for some reason, who gives him his shotgun, and then he heads inside the plant. Once inside, he tells this guy to cut the power, and then he wanders around looking for Cottonmouth Joe. He eventually finds and shoots him, which of course doesn't work, then he starts yelling at these scientists to get out. Cottonmouth Joe knocks the shotgun out of his hands and punches him into the ceiling, so he runs away and has enough time to set up a tripwire thanks to the fact that Cottonmouth Joe just kind of slowly walks around because that's just how slasher villains do things. Leary tells the guy on the radio to turn on the power on his signal, and then he starts flipping switches and pulling cables as if he knows what they do. And then he hides behind some pipes as Cottonmouth Joe sets off the tripwire, which, of course, doesn't do anything, because if you haven't realized this by now, this movie is just a series of pointless sh happening for 88 minutes. Cottonmouth Joe goes down this hallway, Leary seals the door behind him, and then he tells the guy to turn the power on, and this somehow causes Cottonmouth Joe to explode. 
I don't know what they did exactly, but everything just starts blowing up. So Leary runs out of the building and then the movie just kind of ends. It's over. It's all over. Yeah, that's actually how the movie ends. Oh, wait. Well, that was pointless. Okay, now it's over. Ugh. Ah! You again? Why do you keep bothering me? Your frustration excites me. Sexually. What? It gives me a boner. Alex Bones, Apple Acid Shots of Being Positive, Single Success, Long Guy, Brother James, Cameron Dalshaw, Colton 41, Cortez, Crimson Black, Sightest, Diesel Weasel, Duke Snuggles, Eduardo Sanchez, Enrique Ferrari, Franco Soraya, Ginger Jesus, Steve Fizzy, Aaron Independent, Iron Stansford, Jensen, Jimmy Jam, Joel Burke, John Cleveland, Josh Lightbar, Kaiser Wilhelm, the second Lawrence, Amy Little Sr., Let's put it in the back, Levi Jones, Lothar Ronzi, Lipton, Marco McBire, Miss Wizzy, Noble Team 33, Nolan Joseph, James Floyd, Paco, Ricky Baruga, Salter, Salty Pockets, Chipsy Flesh, Swiss Pad, Random Nightlord, Thomas Brown, Hungarian Luke, Tony Belmonte, Toxic Masculinity, Twilight City Studios, YouTube Channel, Group R, Super Mug, Wilker Facey, Extra Big, Extra X, and Zenith.